Hello again, this is Simon Virgil. I'm talking to Tom Barlow from Key West Boats, sales and marketing manager, soon to be celebrated author. And we're looking at the <laughs> Key West 210BR, which is once again one of the latest boats in the Key West lineup. And Tom's little baby. He gave birth to it recently. Yes. Tom. Painful process. <laughs> well, it's mighty big, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about it. Uh, this is one of the few, if not the only, 19 degree dead rise bay boats on the market. Uh, the, way, the reason I like to emphasize that is having fished this boat recently in rough water. Uh, you know, a bay is normally a big wide open body of water. A little bit of breeze makes a bay a very rough body of water. I could run through white caps with this boat over 40 miles an hour. Um, that's pretty impressive. 19 degree dead rise is what allowed us to do that. And there's, there's tournament situations where you need to be there first, and this boat allows you to get there first with that kind of bottom on it. Uh, we've also got the, uh, the very effective hard chines that are downturned on the outside edge of the bottom on this boat. And we're talking about this area right in here, where our downturn deflects water back down into the water instead of letting it get up in the air where it can blow back on you. So it's a very dry running boat. And we've also got a fairly good chine here and not a lot of room to work with but it's a beautiful curve which is also obviously going to cut the nice spray in ways. And you know, people always assume that a bay boat cannot take rough water. Uh, you know, the extreme rough water like you would encounter rolling waves and those kind of things. But if you look at the distance from the keel to the top of the boat, we've got a very deep boat here. You which have. is very capable when it comes to rough water. How does it affect the draft? Are you going to be going to get into those shallow spots that the, the bass guys like? Um, yes, you can get in there, but the dead rise on a boat does affect your draft. The deeper the dead rise is, the more draft it requires to get into, uh, you know, to, to float the boat. But the, um, the trade-off, I think, is very worthwhile because you can get there uh, in a boat that has the dead rise, even if the water is rough, whereas in a boat that can float in six or eight inches of water, uh, may not even get you there. That's true. So the draft on this is 12 inches? About 12 inches. Yeah, 12 inches. With, a, with a reasonable load in the boat, like you would go fishing. Okay, let's go around okay, the back. We're end. rolling again. We're back with our 210BR. It's had a color change. We're pretty quick around we here. Quick. Yes, our so. dark blue boat has become white. <laughs> All the same. Now, this is a very actual interesting part of this boat, Tom. Um, quite a few things going on here. Uh, particularly, the first, of course, is the pad bottom. Now, please. Pad bottom, yes. The pad on the bottom of a boat creates extra lift, whereas a V just cuts into that water. Mm -hmm. The pad, by being flat, gives you like a, a water ski effect, if you will, and yep. rises the boat up higher out of the water. Right. So the faster you go, the farther the boat rises out of the water, the less drag there is. Yep. Water sliding across the bottom of a, of a boat creates a lot of, uh, what is it, uh, viscosity, Ooh. <laughs> which is a, a liquid friction. Yes. Okay. Uh, but there is a lot of viscosity a boat sliding across the water, the less drag you can create, of course, the more speed you get. And, and of course, better fuel economy. And we're talking speed in a boat. Uh, higher speed boats get better fuel economy. So, you know, gasoline prices being what they are, better fuel economy is a wonderful thing. Mm. And that's part of what we're doing here with this pad bottom. Now, that pad's, what, about 11 inches wide, I think you told me? Right out of And that runs pretty well, almost to the length of the boat up until they start getting into the it's going gradually into the view up on the front so that as it's cutting water, it's not down. Yeah. It's right back here in the back end where it creates that lift where it's needed. Right. Now, what about this interesting function in the transom where we've, we've actually created a yeah, the, um, extension to the transom? The deck, which is this part up here, actually overlaps the transom. The transom is up like so, the deck comes and slides over it so that the deck is adding to the strength of the transom by overlapping, it ties everything as if it were one piece. Hmm. So we've got a much stronger transom here than we have in a boat that has with the typical yeah. uh, slack transom. Uh, the uh, the extended transom, as you can see, it extends out from the uh, this, this typical standard flat transom. It extends out another eight inches. The extension 
what it does physically to the boat as far as running is concerned. It gives the, the motor better leverage to raise the bow up, so you don't need excessive trim to get that bow up when you want to run high speed. Right. All right so it increases the, the speed again, increases your fuel economy. But what else it does for this boat, by moving it back eight inches, the splash well, the clearance that you need to tilt the engine up, mm. all of that is moved back eight inches, mm -hmm. so that the, the rear deck, mm. eight inches more walk space on that deck. Right. Uh, okay. All of that comes into play, allowing us to get these rod holders inside of the boat. Yes. The walk around space we have inside the boat, all of that would be reduced by that eight inches. If we didn't have this so that's a huge gain just by doing that, isn't it? It is. Now the other thing about this boat, and this one hasn't had one fitted to it, but it, you've got an option of fitting a hydraulic jack plate. That's right. Now a lot of people wouldn't know, well, outside the States, a lot of people wouldn't know what a hydraulic jack plate is. That's right. What is it, Tom? A hydraulic jack plate is. When you jack, you come up and down. Mm -hmm. The jack plate allows you to do that through an electric switch remotely mounted up on the console. By raising the engine up and down, if you're in shallow water, instead of tilting the engine out, which yep. creates a downward thrust of the propeller, you raise the engine straight up. Clean. Now your thrust from your propeller is efficiently pushing the boat forward, so you can get through that shallow water easier by jacking your engine up. Now, once you get up on plane, the, the propeller doesn't need to be completely immersed in the water anymore. No. Uh, if you can raise the engine up, all of this that you can get out of the water before mm -hmm. the propeller starts slipping reduces drag. If you reduce drag, you increase speed and you increase the fuel cut. So a hydraulic jack plate is a multi-purpose tool mm -hmm. and it is very uh, applicable to this type of boat. Right. Now we're in the 210 Bay Reef. We're going to have a little bit of a look at the rear deck area of the boat. Tom, this is one of your, once we there, we said your baby, and you've done a nice job with this. Um, I particularly like what you've done here with the fold up seats. Yeah, the fold up seats, the latch that you just unlatched there was very necessary because with all of the, the, the speed we talked about back here backs of the seats on the first one we ran would blow right up and they hit about 45 miles an hour. <laughs> so we came back and incorporated latches to hold those seat backs down in the folded down position. Down in the folded position. And very important to note. And you'll notice those, those latches are recessed here so you don't have something to bump your leg on as you come back. Which would be painful because it's just that that sort of you know, high shin sort of knee type area mm -hmm. which is a nasty one when you cop it. And you notice beside those jump seats, we've got the conveniently located cup holders. Mm -hmm. You can uh, never have enough beer, can you? You can well. <laughs> <laughs> and this is all fits in nice and flush, so of course when you stand up here, you're not going to be tripping or falling uh, or anything like this. When you're up here moving around, you don't want to be able to trip on something and fall over. So, uh, you want to stay in the boat. Now, located next to that, we've got our rear live well. Seems pretty cavernous. Uh, the, the idea there is the um, you know, the tournament fishermen they've got fish that they want to be able to uh, generous size live well keeps those fish alive better, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's what we're after here. So that the long fish that are, are legal in those tournaments can fit in there without having to curl up and stay alive till they get back to the way inside. Now I notice this fella's put an LED. I think he's option to. Livewell LED lights. Mm -hmm. Got the Livewell light in there. Yep. Um, you're not that the fish need to see, but you need to see the fish. <laughs> and uh, so that you can grab them to get them back out of there. <laughs> Do you have a capacity figure on this? That's 20 gallons. 20, 20. It's 20 gallons to the overflow. And uh -huh. above the overflow is useless anyway as far as measuring the water capacity. Right. So it does have several inches above the overflow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you do have quite a substantial uh, width here. I mean, that's usually a couple of feet more than a couple of feet on the That's right, that's right yeah. at 30 inches. 30 inches, yeah. yeah. It's quite a big. And, it's just, and you can also get a uh, recirculating live uh, as, right. as an option yeah. as well. And that's what you really see here, that screen. That's, that's the intake for the recirculating system. All right. So he's optioned it up to that. That's right. All right. So he's fairly serious. Okay.
Now behind that, over on the left, we have got the twin storage boxes back here. Right. These storage boxes are both lined, as you can see, yes. the, uh, the liner goes all the way forward, it's underneath these seats. Uh, I have looked at a lot of bay boats in this class, most of them do not have that volume of storage. This mm. is the largest storage volume I've seen in any uh, boat in this 20 21 foot class. The, um, the batteries, uh, this one has twin batteries, you've got a battery switch in here. Okay. One battery, battery fits switch. under the seat, the second battery fits behind that, and you still got a little extra room back here for some, some extra storage in the back end of the boat. Right. Once again, we've got our folding stern light, because it's in that little fellow there. Right. Yep. That closes up nicely, and for anybody who's wondering, this hatch is basically an inspection hatch to get into the bilge pump. No pump Pure area water, water separator. Uh, and while we're right back here, the yes. Sea Star hydraulic steering is standard on this boat. Uh, again, I've looked at uh, the, the competition in this class. Most of them come standard with a mechanical system. The ones that do get the hydraulic go with the base star, uh, which is a much less expensive unit than this. Our standard is this, because this is what you should have on a 150 horsepower motor. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, as usual on the modern key boots, we've got pull-up cleats. That's right. Plenty of stainless rod holders located here. And then if we move around, okay, we've got the flip-flop pull the seat option on this one, where you can have the standard... The Galean Post. Uh, the Galean Post is standard in this boat. This is an even trade-out if you want to get the cooler seat. Uh, it does give you a nice seat that you can flip back and forth. So if you want to just sit down, take a break, prop your feet up on the back deck, it makes mm. it a comfortable option. That's not that one. And we would Pretty usually, handy. usually have a cushion on that for you, too. Yeah, well, we're in the uh, post-production area where I'm quite sure Mike from QC will be picking up on the cushions for yes, us. Buddy. We'll get a cushion before it goes. We're going to get a cushion before it goes. While we're right here, I'd like to point out the, the room that we have between the cooler seat and the, the back yeah. deck. That's the lean-in post option gives you the same amount of room so that you can walk behind that without having to step up on your deck. You can even access the live well. Mm -hmm. uh, which is important. Uh, you don't want to have to you know, stand up on the back deck or something to get into your live well. You can stay secure in the boat while you're back there. Here's a left field question for you. I've often been asked, what's a self-draining deck? How okay. does it work? A self-draining deck is one that when the boat is sitting at rest, the, the floor level is above the outside water level. That way gravity will pull the water out of the boat and into the, uh, the water outside. Um, now, a self-draining deck has its limitations. If we were to put 10 people in this boat, it wouldn't be a self-draining deck. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but within reason, <laughs> with a reasonable load, with you and I in the boat, we've got a self-draining deck. Yeah. And the way I noticed with the key with, if you look closely, I don't know if you're going to pick it up in the camera, but there's a channel in the deck that goes all the way around and takes us to the drains mm -hmm. on both places, which then take the water out the back through the scuppers. That's right. And the floor is slightly crowned in the middle to the outsides so that that water is encouraged to run into those channels and to get it overboard. Channel drains, of course, are below the deck level so that you don't have the annoying puddles. All right. The other advantage of the channels, of course, is most guys probably fish bare feet, mm -hmm. and the channels act as a toe hold. Yeah, right. You're up against the side. You can put Very your nice big toe, toe and a few toes in there, and hey, isn't that brilliant? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's swing around to the dash. This is pretty standard uh, Key West boats dash. Shall we pop the seat on? Oh, yeah. Very good. Once again, that. Uh, Key West steering wheel, we've got our switch gear, all very visible, very handy, all straightforward and simple to use. Our instruments here, you've got a nice big flat area to mount up to what, 10 inch? 10 inch will fit there with a rearrangement of instruments and switches, you can get up to a 12 inch. Well, wow. okay. Well, if you want any more than that, you're being greedy. A uh, couple of cup holders, for once again, because you can't have too much beer. That's right. <laughs> Everything else is fairly standard. Oh, now, our cameraman probably won't be able to see this. <laughs> so we better cut and Well, you can move. take our word for it. <laughs> <laughs> Underneath this console is the only porta potty room on a 20 to 21 foot bay boat anywhere.
and we can move you around and I'm show open you. The door. Now, the the folks that don't need a porta potty room on a bay boat, uh, I know we're thinking. Now, what in the world am I going to use that for? That is huge storage. It is indeed. And we on the the back of that, around. we've got a shelf for the the troll motor batteries. Most people with this boat will have a troll motor, and we've got the space right here for the troll motor batteries. Yep. Uh, how much space? Group 31 batteries will fit on that shelf side by side. Excellent. Right, well, let's move on up to the front end, up to the bow. And we'll give our camera back to our cameraman. Uh, first of all, what have we got under here? A nice little bit of storage. Nice storage. Uh, of course, it's a seat, but under the seat, the storage area insulated to the point where you can put ice drinks and, and maybe a fish if you want to. Uh, whatever you need to use that spot for, it's available. Great. Now, this is pretty nifty. This is a lockable compartment here, yeah, but it looks. And if we lift it up, and it's got a lovely little hydraulic uh, brace there, which is nice. It pulls it up nicely from your hands. It doesn't rip it out of your hands, which some of them do if they're too too much pressure on them. That's right. And inside, would you like me to show the viewers this a little bit? We've got a very, very nice rod locker storage, which will take how many rods? Five rods up to seven and a half foot in length. Isn't that beautiful? And you've got here um, in the space. I, there. I like to stress that there's not just one compartment that will hold a seven and a half foot rod. Every rack in there will hold a seven and a half foot rod. Mm. Now, what about the guys? Um, our fly fishing friends who recently want their nine foot rods, how are we going to accommodate them in this boat, Tom? The fly rods actually up to ten foot will fit in these side pockets. Uh, the the under gunnel rod storage as I call it, each one, each side has a, a rod tip tube that extends to the back end of the boat and that allows up to a ten foot rod on each side. So you put your rather fragile tips right into there and then of course you've got your rod holding ability here. That's right. Okay. And I imagine you could when you're talking the tips you could possibly get more than one tip you could. in there you if could. you really now, wanted you to. You probably wouldn't do that, but you could. You if could you needed to get more than one rod. Uh, the, the rod opening over here without using the rod too is hmm. seven foot. So you can get your seven foot rods in there without having to use the top rod tube at all. Right. Excellent. Well, let's swing back up the front. Make our cameraman work. He needs to lose a bit of weight. <laughs> On the other side, of course, once again, we've got another same lockable rod storage. You've got the same rod, rod capacity, five rods, seven and a half foot in length. Ten rods. That's almost enough. It's almost enough. You can never have too many rods. Let me slip in there. Once again, of course, you've got the nice flushing feet, so when you get up here, I'm not going to trip on anything. This is all flush mount. You haven't got a problem. And you've got a step as well. That's right. And our step doubles as, if I can just put the fingers in here. It doesn't help that the latch is wet. No, it doesn't. Your fingers do so. And we've got our, that is an 18 gallon live well, almost as big as the one in the rear. Twin live wells. Mm -hmm. So we're getting serious, aren't we? That's right. <laughs> and you know, I didn't mention it when we were looking at this compartment here, but for the, the, the man or the fisherman that needs more, this can be converted to a live well here. Three live wells, okay. That's serious. And our next compartment up here, once again, we've got the addition of a hydraulic brace, which certainly is a, something you don't see on a, a price point boat no. like this. So this is definitely high and much, much more expensive. Right, right. those hydraulic uh, supports are, are rather expensive each, and when you start adding up each compartment, that is definitely not something on a price point. No. Now, the rather nifty thing I see in this little boat um, which I think Key West have uh, added recently 
is a place to put your bucket. That is nice, isn't it? <laughs> so your bucket won't fall over. Mm -hmm. That's a very nifty idea. Bucket's what I call a multi-purpose device. <laughs> <laughs> I like that term, a multi-purpose bucket, yeah, multi-purpose device. And once again, that's a huge storage compartment. It is. When you look at that. Generous size storage compartment, and you'll notice the lip around this compartment, as they, every compartment has, it's a rain channel, so that the rainwater that hits that lid channels into this, channels right on out and into the cockpit. Which, I don't know whether people will be able to see it on this video, I mean, it's been raining today, we've been in and out, taking the videos and there's no water in the compartments we're looking at that's a good thing you know the, the water is going through the channels uh, our rod locker was dry our rod locker was dry and you pointed out the lock We've got a lock on that as well there's a lot of locks lock on this board. boat right we even lock up the bait yeah what have we got gold gold plated bait in there have we <laughs> sometimes people would give gold for a bait <laughs> One okay, thing we forgot. Let's yep. look at the, the, anchor, the anchor locker. And as you open that and fold it back, you'll notice the back side of your anchor locker lid, the same as all of the lids in this boat, is a nice, smooth, finished lid. Yep. There's no rough finish, no speckle back here. All of that's finished. Even down inside the anchor locker is a finished compartment. Yep. And what do we got here? We got a little plug there. Tom, that plug what's... is for your troll motor. That's our troll motor plug right in there. Yep, I've got you. And you can plug in the troll motor, run the, the wire out through the small opening we see right here. Yep. And close the lid so it doesn't interrupt the flat surface you've got up here. Right. To be able to, let me close that down. Yep, close it and show it, that little gap, yep. Now you've got easy access right on up to the very bow of the boat without having to step up on the top deck. So you can reach your troll motor if it's a hand control model. Mm -hmm. um, if it's a foot control, of course, you'd stand back, and if it's a remote control, you can be anywhere in the boat. But the, the ever-popular tiller control, simplest, most dependable troll motor out there, you can reach without having to step up on step any up other up. deck. And now at last, now that looks like the bow stern light, repeated up the front. Ah, uh, that is the same socket as the stern light, except it's for the bow light. It's for the bow light, yes. We did notice, actually, when we were having a look at the boat, there didn't seem to be any navigation lights on the uh, sides of the boat, so... That's right. How high does this little uh, pole come, Tom? It's about a 10-inch 10, 10 light, and it's high so that it'll clear the troll motor. When the troll motor is folded up, it would block a light on the deck. Right. So we put the pole light there to come above the troll motor and give you the visibility that the law requires. Okay. Why not put them on the console, for instance? Um, if the light were on the console, if you'll pan around here. I will indeed. And I'm writing. Yes. I just blocked your view. You did indeed. And someone can run into you. This is just not safe. That's quite correct. And in the States, that would result in a rather expensive lawsuit. You got it. Which could come back on Key West even, couldn't it? Absolutely. Mm, not something we really want. I think we've pretty well covered it, don't you? Uh, that does cover it. There's a lot of features in this boat, and I'm sure we've missed some. But <laughs> I think we get the highlights. <laughs>